module, you're taking a look at three texts that were written in the early 20th century. And even though they're all from the same time period, you'll, you probably notice they're definitely reflecting some different realities of that time period. What we're going to focus on here is that experience of reading some texts of different genres in particular. So thinking about the form. Well, so let's start by talking about Wilfred Owen's poem, Disabled, and the form that this poem takes. So again, I, it's obviously a poem. You can tell because of the line breaks and it is broken into several stanzas and you can see that white space um, between those units mark where the stanzas begin and end. So again, formally we can readily recognize this as a poem. Now, your experience of reading this um, is gonna be a little bit different than reading the fiction or the drama. As we talked about in the intro with the definitions, those kinds of texts are written in sentences and paragraphs. Poems are still written in sentences and paragraphs, but the form uh, breaks the meaning of those things a bit. So let's take a look at that first stanza of Disabled, and you have the first few lines. Uh, he sat in a wheelchair waiting for dark and shivered in his ghastly suit of gray, legless, sewn short at elbow through the park. Now notice that break there. Um, that that is called enjambment, and we'll talk about that in unit two a little bit more, but basically it just means a line break that, that interrupts a grammatical unit. And that's uh, that can sometimes cause you to mischunk meaning in a poem. So when you're reading through just for meaning, it's a good idea to read through for sentences. Just ignore the line breaks at first and read through for sentences to, to get the meaning of a poem. So really what the meaning is there is through the park, voices of, of boys rang, saddening him like a hymn, voices of play and pleasure after a day till gathering sleep had mothered them from him. And notice that's the whole sentence. It actually takes up about three and a half lines in the poem. So if you're having trouble just with the basic reading and meaning, um, getting the, just comprehending the meaning of the text, give that a try. Try reading for the sentences and just, just for the moment ignoring the line breaks. You'll notice also in that, in that last line of the first stanza, gathering sleep had mothered them from him. Notice how it's taking the word mothered and using it as a verb. We don't typically do that, obviously. Uh, it's called a form shift but we understand it, right? We understand the concept of a mother and when it is used as a verb in that way because we conceptually understand what that is, we can also understand it being used as a verb even though that's not a typical use. But those are some of the things, some of those formal uh, features in poetry that, that you're gonna find are gonna happen. Uh, another issue in this particular poem, because it is from a different time period, this one uh, written in 1917, and we'll talk about the significance of that in a second, is that you'll, you'll have some words used in different ways. And some of them are um, have some footnotes for you, like when it says uh, it was after football when he'd drunk a peg. So that one has not only to do with the time period, but it also has to do with this being a British writer versus an American writer. Um, and in this case, a peg, if you um, take a look at the note there, it says a drink, usually brandy and soda, right? We, we wouldn't necessarily know that um, as the audience for this poem now today and in America, um, but that's glossed for you. But there are also words like um, in the second stanza where it says about this time, the town used to swing so gay. Well, the term gay has obviously taken on some different meanings over time, and in the early 20th century, this um, it would not have meant homosexual. It would have meant there's a lot of homosexuals in the town. It simply means happy, uh, and I'm sure a lot of you know this older meaning of that word. So words also change in their meaning over time, and so another good policy is to um, identify words that may have changed in meaning over time, and the way you can identify those is if you know, it's a word you know what it means, but that meaning doesn't seem to make sense in that context. So that can be another good clue. Um, and there's a great resource for helping you to uncover the meanings of words that as they change over time, it's called the Oxford English Dictionary. And you can find um, a link to that on our Lord's Library website under the library databases and under O. And if you were to look up that word there, you would see different meanings with dates showing when those, those meanings were in use. So that's a great research resource we'll practice with uh, a little bit later on in this unit to find meanings, to recover meanings of words 
uh, from different time periods that we might not be familiar with as modern readers. So that's another uh, element to think about. So um, the form itself, uh, we need to think through and we can think about some ways to deal with that structure, the syntax changes and the line breaks, um, and we can work through those to still recover the meaning. Some words are used in different ways and some words might have changed in their meaning over time. All those are things about the form that we should take into account as we're reading poems. 